I see a lot of people make this mistake. It has to do with client and server components. Let's say we have some page here, it just has an H1 and a button component. Very simple. Now this button component right now doesn't really do anything. And typically if you click a button, you want to do something. Let's add an on click handler here. Add just a function that will log hello world when we click it. If I save here, we're going to get an error because this client side interactivity is only possible in client components. And by default, everything here in the app directory in Next.js is a server component, right? So page and button right now are server components and we're trying to add this interactivity. Well, that's only possible in client components. And if you don't pay attention, you may think, oh, I'll just turn this component into a client component. So actually the whole page. So if you do the whole page like this, the error is indeed gone and this will work, but we lose all the benefits that come from server components. Because what's gonna happen now is not only the button will become a client component, right? Because if you import something into a client component, this button now will also become a client component. And that means if you import something else, let's say a post component, because let's say we also have some post component here, which is just a server component, doesn't need any client side interactivity, which is perfectly fine staying a server component, but because we're now importing that here in this page, which is a client component, this post will now also become a client component. And that's not what we want. Ideally, components can stay server components. There's a reason that Next.js made everything here a server component by default. And that's because server components come with a lot of benefits. And they actually show this on their website. So let's quickly go through it. So there's server components versus client components. So here they mention, if you want to fetch data, well, they're basically saying you can do it in a server component and you can't do it in a client component. It's not entirely true you can still you know fetch data in a client component what they mean here is in many cases it's it's optimal to do it from a server component because server components can be closer to the source of data you can also access backend resources for example you can update your database directly from a server component you can keep sensitive information like tokens api keys now a big one is actually this one keep large dependencies on the server so for example in our example here let's say this post component is actually using some third-party uh, library like sanitize HTML. This is a big import, as you can see. Ideally, we can keep this on the server. We don't want to ship this to the client. But now we are importing this post component here into a client component. Therefore, this post component will actually become a client component and this will be shipped to the client. All because we just wanted to add some interactivity to this button, right? So we don't, we didn't even need to do this. So we don't want to do this. We want to remove this here and we want to add the use client to the button instead, right? So if we do this, the button component will become a client component. We are still importing the button here. And now if we go back to our page here, you can see the error is still gone. This still works, but the page is still a server component. The post is still a server component. So this big third party library is still only on the server and the button is now a client component. And so we can as client-side interactivity, right? So this, this, these third parties can take up a lot of space. Imagine you're working with like 3D assets or maybe video or audio assets and you're doing some analytics on them or these big data charts. There's lots of third-party libraries that you're gonna use in, in those contexts. And if you can try keeping that a server component, it's not always possible. Sometimes, you know, there's no way around. You really need that client-side interactivity, but there's already people, they're coming up with hacks right now, but there's gonna be more standards in the future around this that will allow you to keep it as server component, right? So really try to see if you can keep it a server component, right? So it's really important that you understand as a React developer that your React app is basically a tree of components. So you have your root component. This is where it all starts. So in Next.js, that's actually this layout component, layout file, and then there's the root layout component. This wraps all of your pages in Next.js, right? So then you can have these pages below there. So maybe a home page, about page, posts page, right? So these are pages, right? Page, P, page, and this is the root, right? So it's basically a tree. Now these pages can import many different components. Maybe you have a button component like we had in this example, or a post component, or some date component, right? Date when it was posted. And you're going to import these components all in this page. And a naive React developer Developer, when you want to add some interactivity only to this component may decide to mark this whole page component as a client component with use client. And when you do that, all of these components now become client components. So this becomes a client component, this becomes a client component, and this becomes a client component, even though these two may not even need any you know, client side interactivity. And you're losing all the benefits from server components. So the React or Next.js teams, they recommend that you mark the components as a client components only on the outer edges of the tree. So the leaves of the tree so you don't want to add it here you want to add it to the button right so then this can be gone and only the button is a client component now and these can all stay server components right so try to use use client directive at the 
edge, the outer edges of your tree, at the leaves of the tree. Right? And sometimes this will require some refactoring. Let's say we have some kind of form component and in there we have a form and maybe other elements as well. And then eventually you want to have a button as well. So now if we want to do some interactivity on this button, we can say on click console log hello world. So if you would do this, you would get an error now because this is a server component and we're trying to add interactivity here, right? So now something here needs to become a client uh, component. Now, if we would make this a client component, use client, all of this is affected by it, right? So the form and other elements that don't even need any inter interactivity, now they also become client components. And maybe you're using some big third-party library in the form or some other elements here. Now that will also get shipped to the client, all because we're making this a client component just for this button here. Right? So it's better to basically remove this put it into its own component like here, mark this as the client component, and then just import it here and use it like this. All right, so now we can remove this use client here and this this can stay a server component with all the benefits, benefits that we get from it and still import this client component here and just use it like this. So you get the same result with all the benefits from server components. All right, so a big misconception, a big mistake that people are making as well is with these provider components. So let's say you're using the context API or you're using some third party library that has some kind of provider provider component. So basically this happens when a lot of your components in your React app need access to data. So with the context API, for example, you have this theme context provider. I'm just leaving out the context details here and it takes in children and it, and it also passes through the children, right? Very typical here. And then you want to wrap parts of your app that need access to the data with this provider component. So typically a very typical pattern here is if we go into this root layout uh, file, is you're gonna wrap basically the entire app in that provider component, right? This is a very typical pattern here where all the pages essentially now get access to the value that you are passing through with the provider component. Now these provider components are typically client components. And now the question is, since this is a client component and we are wrapping basically our entire app with this, do all of these other components now also become client components? And the answer is no. So something becomes a client component if you add use clients in the file or you import it in another client component, right? So you need to pay attention to basically the, the import tree, not the render tree. So these children here, all these components in here can still be server components. And this can be a client component because here it's just taking the children and passing through the children, right? So if you want to have server components inside a client component, you have to use this children pattern to pass through the server components like this, right? So that was a common mis misconception that if this is a client component, then everything in here automatically becomes a client component. That's not true if you're using that children pattern, right? So this can all stay server components. Would also be kind of strange because this is such a typical pattern in React and would be kind of strange if this would undo all those benefits from server components. That doesn't really make sense. So that's not how it works, right? So the way to think about it is it's not about the structure of how we're rendering it here. It's about the structure of the imports, right? So here here, if I import button into this client component, the button becomes a client component. But here, just because we are rendering server components within a client component, as long as we're using that children pattern, that doesn't change anything, right? So it's really about uh, the imports and not really about this rendering tree. But right? another way of looking at it is that basically this use client is basically the boundary for server and client uh, components. So as soon as you add a use client here, everything that gets imported will also become client component. So this is basically a boundary. We don't even need, right? So this button right now, I don't even need to add use client here. The fact that I'm importing it here in this page here will mean that it becomes a client component. So it's basically like a boundary. And then if I add, if I import something else here, like an icon, an icon component, that would also become a client component. Even though this file itself does not have use client, if I would import another component in here, that also becomes a client component, right? So here we're basically defining a boundary in the React tree. Like from now on, everything that gets imported here will also become client component. Right? And those components in turn, when they import something, they also become client components. All right, now very tricky. What if you have a button and let's say we're importing that here in a form and let's make this form use client. So this is going to be a client component. This button itself does not have use client. So this is not inherently a client component. This is a client component. We're importing the button here. Now, as you know, you can import components in multiple other components. So this post could also import button, right? So here we could add button here and this post is a server component. So now I'm importing the same component in 
a server component as well as in a client component. So what's going to happen here? Well, it actually works as expected. So basically this component here is instantiated twice. And in the in relation to this form here, in the context of the form, it's going to be a client component. But in relation to the post here, in the context of the post component here, it will stay a server component. Right, so all of this is very confusing at first. And my React Next.js course is almost finished. So I highly recommend you get on the list. And if you do that, you get a discount code when I release it. Now, I do want to mention, I see a lot of people, they're jumping into React and Next.js with a lot of enthusiasm. But you do need to make sure that you have mastered the underlying fundamentals. Those are both JavaScript as well as CSS. I have courses on them. I highly recommend you go through them. The links are in the description. Right, so it's, it's very easy to pick up React and Next.js once you have mastered JavaScript. And also very easy to pick up something like Tailwind once you've mastered CSS. Right, so I highly recommend you check it out. And if you like the video, I would really appreciate it if you like if you could leave a like as well as subscribe with the notifications on. Then I recommend you check out the next video and I hope to see you there.